Hi, David Rosenberg here for the Psychopharmacology Institute. In this CAP or Child and Adolescent Psychiatry Smart Take, we'll take a close look in terms of the current state of best practice treatment algorithms for pediatric bipolar disorder, manic, mixed, and depressed episodes. This is so timely given the continued challenges clinicians face in treating pediatric bipolar disorder. This illness takes an enormous toll on patients and their families, and for many, effective treatment still remains elusive. Side effects and monitoring can create additional challenges. In this article, Hobbs and colleagues provide a thoughtful and comprehensive update to the American Academy of Child and Adolescent Psychiatry's 2005 algorithm for manic mixed episodes of pediatric bipolar disorder. Now, back in 2005, lithium was the only FDA-approved treatment for pediatric bipolar disorder, manic or mixed episodes. Well, as you know, a lot has changed since then, even though significant challenges remain. Now there are actually several approved treatments for pediatric bipolar manic or mixed episodes and two medications, lorazidone and olanzapine fluoxetine combination that are FDA approved for treating pediatric bipolar disorder depressed episodes. Interestingly though, divalproic sodium, a go-to medication for many clinicians for many years treating pediatric bipolar disorder failed to separate from placebo in randomized clinical trials in pediatric bipolar disorder. And that's interesting, right? Because we know, particularly in female patients, this medicine can be associated with polycystic ovarian syndrome. And yet, at least in pediatric populations, in the reports reviewed, no separation from placebo. Oxcarbazepine also failed to separate from placebo in randomized clinical trials in pediatric bipolar disorder. For pediatric bipolar disorder depressed episode, lorazidone is the first line treatment of choice. And while lorazidone and olanzapine fluoxetine combination have comparable efficacy for pediatric bipolar disorder depressed episode, lorazidone has significantly lower metabolic side effect risk then does the olanzapine fluoxetine combination. Now, if lorazidone is partially but not sufficiently effective, augmentation with lamotrigine is warranted. Remember, though, especially in youth 15 and under, monitor very closely for Stevens Johnson syndrome, which can be potentially lethal or permanently disfiguring. And if you're using lamotrigine, start low, go slow and discuss this potential side effect with the patient and family while they're monitoring very closely. Even in older adolescents, it's important to monitor closely, although the risk is not quite as high. If depressive symptoms remain problematic after augmentation with lamotrigine, augmentation of lorazidone, addition of an FDA-approved SSRI for pediatric is recommended, either fluoxetine or escitalopram. All things being equal, I would recommend trying escitalopram first, given that it's the SSRI with the fewest drug-drug interactions, with fluoxetine having the most risk for drug-drug interactions. Now, if lorazidone treatment is deemed to have failed, that is no response, cross-tapering to olanzapine fluoxetine combination is recommended. It was noted that olanzapine fluoxetine combination in pediatric bipolar disorder is frankly underused despite its being effective and FDA approved for pediatric bipolar depression. There's also evidence that weight gain and metabolic changes associated with olanzapine fluoxetine combination can be significantly mitigated by either using topiramate as well as diet and exercise lifestyle changes. So whenever I use olanzapine with or without fluoxetine, I always discuss exercise and diet planning proactively ahead of time. As you know, exercise can also have antidepressant and anti-anxiety effects, so it's a no-brainer, a win-win. And if there is a partial or insufficient response to olanzapine fluoxetine combination for pediatric bipolar disorder, lamotrigine can be added.
if the FDA approved treatments fail, non-FDA approved treatments such as quetiapine, aripiprazole, asenapine, risperidone, other SSRIs, and lithium can be tried. Remember to only use SSRIs in combination with a mood stabilizing agent to prevent a manic switch. Where possible, non-medication options such as CBT are indicated to eliminate or even reduce antidepressant dose. For patients with pediatric bipolar disorder, depressed episode failing more than two second generation antipsychotics, ECT can be considered. For treating manic mixed episodes of pediatric bipolar disorder, there are more good options. The first line treatment is still clearly with a second generation antipsychotic, FDA approved for pediatric bipolar disorder mixed or manic episode. And these include aripiprazole, asenapine, olanzapine, quetiapine, or risperidone. If there's no response to the initial second generation antipsychotic, one of the other FDA approved second generation antipsychotics is indicated as monotherapy. Now, if there's a partial but still insufficient response to the FDA approved second generation antipsychotic, augmentation with lithium is recommended. The advantages of lithium's use include its neuroprotective and anti-suicidal properties. And there's intriguing data that lithium can help decrease substance use and abuse in pediatric patients with bipolar disorder. That is, it lessens the risk in those high-risk patients of developing a substance use disorder. Another advantage of using lithium with the second-generation antipsychotic is that when the acute episode is resolved, the second generation antipsychotic can be tapered to minimize risk for metabolic side effects. That being said, lithium is not considered a first line monotherapy for pediatric bipolar disorder for acute, manic, or mixed episodes because of its lower efficacy compared to the second generation antipsychotics. And don't forget that lithium and the second generation antipsychotics both have significant side effect burdens. But the increased efficacy of the second generation antipsychotics in pediatric bipolar disorder makes them the first line recommendation. So a lot of information here. Bottom line is this is an excellent, very clinically relevant article that provides real world algorithms for how to treat pediatric bipolar disorder, manic mixed episode and depressed episode. There are obvious limitations. Treatment still remains a huge challenge for many patients. There are many gaps. For example, the neurodevelopmental implications are huge and likely require more scrutiny. For example, it looks like lamotrigine may be more effective in adolescents with bipolar disorder, while oxcarbazepine may be more effective in younger children with pediatric bipolar disorder. Exciting times ahead, particularly with the possibility of combining these randomized controlled trials with studies to identify objective markers of psychiatric illness with neuroimaging and pharmacogenetic strategies.